Gas Systems Go. Clear for liftoff. What's going on, everybody? Talking fights as usual on Friday with my man Big Marley. Pretty good UFC card, man. Nice, I mean DFS card, I should say. Okay, top to bottom entertainment fights. Always love 13. Next week's UFC 300, so we can't be too greedy. I'm very pumped what we got this week. I think it's a pretty hard DFS card. I think it's another good DFS card. We've been spoiled these past couple weeks getting 13 fights. None of these 11 fights, 10 fights going on we do have weigh-ins going on right now looks like roughly half the fighters already weighed in they already made weight successfully still plenty to go though so fingers crossed keep all 13 12 is not the worst so bring you in big marley how you doing on this fine friday afternoon yeah i'm good and i, I agree it's a really tough card there's i think every underdog is live on this card and then looking for fades is tough so it's going to be hard to narrow down the player pool on this one. There's a couple people like I'm okay taking stands on, but I'm not trying to go near all in on anybody. There's maybe two or three good fights that I'm I'm cool targeting both sides of in the majority of my lineups. But then there's a few that I, I don't know what I'm going to do with, so I hope you can help me out on those. So we will see. And hopefully I have some that I'm, I need some help too. So hopefully we have different ones that we can try and lead each other in the right path. Uh, before we do get into it, what's going on? Ben's always in here. MPs always get in here as well. Big card indeed. Appreciate that like button. Appreciate that subscribe button. And if you want to join us at the nation, all the momentum in the world. So many new faces coming in on the daily. Rob's in here as well. We have, if you want all the sports, you're watching MMA. So I assume you probably want MMA. MLB going on. There's early slate that locks in three minutes. Afternoon that locks in like an hour or something. Main slate at three. NBA going on. Rio shipped 70K two days ago. Big NBA slate in the association today. PGA showdown going on. MMA Saturday. NASCAR Sunday. Man, so busy over here. A lot of money to be made. Still, we don't raise our prices during times like this. All the sports going. Still can find us as cheap as ever. Monthly, six-month annual packages. All can be used. All you can use the code HOOP15 on. Gets you 15% off those packages. If you want to try weekly, the promo code doesn't work. You don't get in the Discord either. But as low as 30 bucks, you can see everything on the site. Check out the content. See if it is right for you. Projections, ownership already up in MMA right now. Um, if any updates, it'll be updated. All of our stuff going on the site after the show. Pretty shortly after all my stuff is done. Just seeing if I'm going to make any changes. Talking to Big Marley. We got PGA, MLB, NBA. So much going on. Chippinnation.com. Head over. Hoop15 is the promo code. 15% off. Broad slate, any other? Yeah, I guess you kind of gave your broad slate overview. No favorites above minus, uh, what do we got? 330 right now, 340. Isn't Melissa Mullins, Melissa Dixon right now the biggest favorite? Minus 340, we see them lose all the time in MMA. About half the fights, seven of the 13, expected to go the distance. Six of them are expected to finish. So coin flips there. We had one really late notice replacement, but it's a pretty close line in that one. Hugo Falco, minus 130, minus 110. I'm not going to be making any rules. Main event's going to get a ton of ownership. Any other broad slate overview before we go fight by fight? No, hopefully we can uh, talk it out, and, and I'll feel better after the podcast. But, yeah, I haven't made lineups yet. I do think it's going to be a good MME card where I just want to spread out my exposure and hope to hit the nuts. Yeah, that's how, yeah, that's exactly how we do We talk a lot in the playbook. Um Slate plan. I put it on the Poirier card when I had a, got a live final seat, or you have to qualify multiple times for live final. Almost got the nuts. I was actually talking to Siggy in Vegas. He brought it up. If you saw my dots on those, they were all on the left pretty much. Just one or two teams that trickled on the right. In MMA, you only need one or two. Like I, I don't think it's a sport. We talked about it a little last week. We'll get into it a little tangent, but I don't think it's a sport. You go 80% on four fighters, full fade seven fighters, and hope to get lucky. Because even if you do that and all those fighters win and all your fades lose, one guy that or like one person you don't have or something can put up 130 or 140. 
you can get everything else right on the card, six for six everywhere. You still don't take first place, multiple chops in first, second place is pretty much irrelevant. So I definitely am trying to diversify more in MMA. Sometimes my pool is a little bigger. I still try and make fades, some stands, um, but I try and mess with my ownerships, give myself more outs. You only need one team in MMA, just like NFL showdown. It's always first place. And after the first way chop, it's always a bunch of other ones. NBA showdown. A lot of people at Chip and Nation have a lot of success in the NBA showdown streets. Same way. So MMA, ownership game, duplication sports. Um, and yeah, I try and spread myself out. Not necessarily trying. I'm going to pick this guy to win. So I'm fading the other one. Get more exposure target fights that I like. More so than just individual fighters in fights. That's enough of that though. Let's get in fight by fight. 13 to talk about on this fine Friday afternoon. Starting in the women's division. Melissa Dixon slash Mullins taking out Nora Cornell. 9,300 is Mullins, one of the most expensive on the card. 6,900 is Cornell. Mullins, biggest favorite, minus 340. Cornell plus 280. Fight to end inside the distance, plus 175. Pretty much all the finish equity on the Mullins side at plus 210. Cornell plus 725. I've talked enough. Big Marley, take it away. Yeah, this is one where I really don't know what I want to do with this one. Because uh, because the salaries are so spread out, I do think that Mullen's big advantage in this one is going to be on the ground. If she can get takedowns, she could probably control a lot of the fight, maybe even get a submission along the way. But I don't know that I agree with her being as big of a favorite as she is because I think Cornhole is probably the better striker of the two. I think she's more powerful on the feet as well. And then in her last fight, she was taken down multiple times and, and controlled for like eight minutes of the fight, but that was against a striker in Jocelyn Edwards. I kind of thought that Cornhole was going to be the more likely wrestler in that fight. So I feel like it kind of caught her by surprise where in this one, she's going to have to know she needs to stuff takedowns. And if she can stuff takedowns, I think she's live to win the fight. I think she's going to need a knockout for any real ceiling, but any win at 6,900 maybe could cut it this week. I don't know. Um, I think she would probably score at least, 10x if she does get a win here I, I was actually i thought she lost her last fight i was like i saw that she had a win on the fight log and i was like wait that's not right she lost she, that fight yeah, <laughs> but I she, agree. she did get a, just a bad decision win but she scored 74 points and like the worst she could have done i'm sure was, so. i mentioned the Jocelyn edwards fight you remember that last week when we were talking robberies this was one of them i was thinking of <laughs> yeah. i mean it was it was pretty bad yeah and yeah i forgot all about it and just going through, I had to go check all the sites. I was like, holy shit, she did win. Yeah, because I usually don't listen to the decision at the end when I'm re-watching fights. Um, but yeah, I think Mullen's going to have really the same success if she's able to get takedowns like Jocelyn Edwards can. She can control the fight for 10-plus minutes. Maybe she can get four-plus takedowns here as well and score 100-plus in a decision. So, at, you know, it's somewhat low ownership, you know, pivot-wise anyways from the people that she's around. I'm a little bit interested, but I do prefer – to go up to Walker or down to like a Bahamonde, like the field probably will as well. So I'll just be mixing her in. And then Cornhole at 6,900, she's just so cheap that I don't want to X her out of my pool because I think she's alive to win this fight. But I think that there's so many live dogs. There's so many dogs that I like more than her as well, more likely to win, more of a ceiling. So I might not get to her, but I'm also fine with anywhere like between zero and 10%, I'd say. Yeah, I agree with a lot of your stuff. My preferred play is Mullins for the thing. Like, this fight's going to be one of the lowest owned combined ownerships on the card. At 9,300, people will rather go Bahamundes for cheaper. They'll rather go Walker, I think, for more expensive. Rather go Brendan Allen in the main event. Like, she is – we don't. We have her at 24% right now. I'm not going to say all the ownerships as we go because they are at ShipAnation.com. If you're following, they're up in Solver. They're up on the site, projections, ownership, all that good stuff. So you can check it if you are a member – part of the premium content, but I mean, it's pretty obvious, at least in my eyes, other people like the Bob Mundes, the Allens, the Walkers, Campbell, Charlie Campbell, even rather play them over the woman's fighter with the worst inside the distance prop, heavily favored to go to decision. She has wrestling upside. Like you said, the striker took Cornell down and controlled her. Like Melissa Mullins wants it on the mat. Like I think she control minutes on, on the mat here and you know, wrestling, that means decision or finish. For Mullins, you're telling me she has a 100-point upside? I'll take that for sure. And then Cornell on the other side, I'm fading. Um, I totally agree with everything you said. Like, everyone's live. If I had 150 teams, I probably don't X out anyone before, like, 
I make all my stuff. Like maybe if I get 3% of cornhole, I would then cross her off. But the reason, like you said, there's just so many live dogs. Like I'd rather Chris shows Giagos, even though I love Bahamundes, at least with Giagos, you're getting a lot of leverage off a of chalkier Bahamundes. You're not getting too much leverage off of Melissa Mullins. I think she'll be on her back a decent amount. Like I just don't love the upside for her. plus 700 to finish. Like you're hoping for a 70, 75 point win. It feels like, which isn't even guaranteed to be enough. So yeah, it's Mullins or nothing for me in this one. I'll be using Mullins and chalkier lineups, but I do agree with you that in a vacuum, there's other better fighters in that nine K range. What's going on, David? My man, Siggy, what's going on? You like Chepe and Pete's price tag? Heck yeah, I do too. A lot of live good dogs down below. Those two, Argueta, Chris Curtis, like you go to uh, Moneyline Valley, Jermaine Durandamy, like a lot of these people, Calvillo, a lot of these 7K fighters, not necessarily, some of them have good time, big time upside. Some of them have good money line uh, equity for their price. So yeah, no cornhole for me, Mullins. We'll keep it rolling though. Next fight on the card, we have Dylan Butka, Cesar Almeida, minus 134 is Butka, plus 114 is Cesar Almeida. This fight's plus 110 to finish, plus 225 inside the distance for Butka, plus 325 for Almeida, 8,500, 7,700. Clash of styles, Butka wants to wrestle, Cesar Almeida wants to keep it on the feet. Who do you think wins out? Yeah, I think it's a pretty good fight to target just because of the clash of styles. Butka's going to want to wrestle, and if he can wrestle and win the fight, he has a chance to score over 10x of that $8,500 salary even in a decision win maybe he could even just control it so much on the ground land some little shots to where Almeida can't can't defend himself and the ref steps in but I do think most of the finishing equity in this one's going to be on the Almeida side I think he's got a huge striking advantage in this one he's a kickboxer and he fought uh Alex Pereira three times back in the day like 10 10 years ago and he went one and two against Alex Pereira that's pretty damn good um and then Two of the fights that I watched of his MMA fights, he just starts the dude in the first round. I think he's got big power in his hands, obviously legs as well. Uh, but I think he can crack Budka and knock him out, score 100 plus as an underdog. So I'm interested in both sides, but more interested in Almeida. I'm going to get the upset in this one. Almeida by TKO. I think he uh, could also win a striking based decision, not get there. I mean, but still a win. And then in his contender series fight he controlled the fight on the ground for over a full round uh so i don't think he would be dead in the water at least if he can get takedowns of his own or if he can get a reversal on this wrestler i don't think that budka would have anything to offer off his back all that we are looking for in budka is for wrestling and top control time i think that's all we want from him and if he can get it done he probably scores well but i like the kickboxer in this one i think he's got a bigger advantage on the feet than budka does on the ground yeah, I, I like that. Uh, my lead was a little on the Bucca side because of, I mean, the line movement. So this line completely flipped. Bucca open plus 145, uh, minus 175 for Almeida, or minus 170. Now it's a like minus 135, plus 115, roughly. I usually side with the wrestler and the grappler. And just, like I saw Almeida stuck on his back in contender series. If you think he can, I'd be surprised to see him land a takedown. If he does get a reversal, I totally agree with you on that. And he definitely has power. I will admit, though, I was a little surprised to see Bucca plus 225 inside the distance and Caesar plus 325 because I do agree with you. It feels like, what is that, banking on a Bucca TKO down below? Like a plus 350 sub? I don't really see Bucca. I haven't really seen much from him. He's more like control time and like fishing for submissions. But the inside the distance prop says otherwise. Any thoughts yeah. on, on that? It, it almost just seems to me like just the narrative. We got a wrestler going against a kickboxer. But when I what I watched from Budka, I just wasn't very impressed with his wrestling. And yeah, I don't think that Almeida is going to get a takedown, but maybe like Budka shoots for one and Almeida stuffs it and just ends up on top, something yeah. like that. Yeah. The Luke, um, a, the Luke a. Buckley <laughs> thing. I mean, what yeah, was Luke well, a doing? I didn't even see that whole card. I passed out super early. I drank, <laughs> I started drinking at like noon for a family Easter. <laughs> And I got home at the start of the card. I was like, I'm, I'm passing out. There's no way I'm making it up to like 2 a.m. for this. So yeah. called it a night, missed the entire thing, haven't gone back and watched it. But, yeah, and this one I think I made is one of my favorite, you know, top three underdogs on the card probably. 
I like it. Yeah, definitely live. And I, so what, in the slate plan, I said my preferred play slightly is Bucca, not a strong lean. But I love the Almeida side because you can go 800, plug in Bucca, take Bucca out, go Almeida, and you're not giving up much. So I like it even more now that Marley is on that side a little bit. But a solid fight to attack. And I will put in from the start, I prefer Stars and Scrubs a little more than I do the mid-tier build this week. I think there is some live dogs down below. Mid-tier 85, 7,700. I'm indifferent with some of these mid-tier fights. Maybe that changes a bit. Um, like that Falco Hugo fight on the best read on. Uh, the Chepe fight later, not the strongest lean. Stars and Scrubs, though, I do know I like the high 9K range. The Argettas, the Chris Curtises, the peaks of the world. So just wanted to bring that up. Keep it rolling. Next fight on the card. Another what I'm looking at is the class of styles. Gene Matsumoto taking on Dan Argueta, minus 163. Matsumoto, plus 143. Dan Argueta, plus 190 for this fight to finish. Matsumoto, plus 315. Argueta, plus 450. I'll start it off, 8,800, 7,400. Fading Matsumoto. I always try to have four fades. He is one of them. Dan Argueta, I like a lot. I mean, we're looking. Matsumoto is a talented, well-rounded fighter. I'm looking at it, Clash of Styles, though, because Argueta wants to wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. It's easiest that Matsumoto keeps it on the feet. Not like Argueta's lost, but we saw Miles Johns piece him up a bit when he can stuff the takedowns. I mean, man, give me Algueta all day, though. 7,400. He legit has as much upside as anybody on this slate. He wants to chain wrestle for days. You look at his record, 1-1-2. One, one, and two, Like, that Ronnie Lawrence one was a win. Miles Johns, he lost. You can say 2-2, two and two, but he popped for the good stuff after. I, I don't know exactly what it was. He popped for something. I like Argueta's pace. Matsumoto, 14-0. Making his UFC debut, though, there's some unknowns. Kid might be good, but give me the price difference. I, I like Arguet a lot in this. And I don't love Matsumoto because he's going to be low-owned if you want to play him in chalkier car, or in chalkier lineups. However, I don't like playing strikers that are going to be defending takedowns for 15 minutes. It's hard to, like, get off your own volume. You're always thinking about it. So I think he's early KO or bust, kind of. So, yeah, Arguet for me. What about you? Yeah, I think I just fully agree with that. I, I also think that – Matsumoto could get a submission in the first round and score 90 plus. I, I think he has a, a black belt in BJJ. So he's yeah, got he's dangerous submission potential. Definitely going to be the better striker. But yeah, uh striking based decision is not going to get him there, especially if he's defending takedowns for seven minutes or, or on his back for seven minutes. So I'm I think I agree with the fade on Matsumoto. If we're looking for fades, which I usually am, he's probably one of my top three fades on the card. And then on, on the opposite side, Argueta is definitely one of my top three favorites, I mean, underdogs on the card, because he does have to wrestle. And if he is going to win this fight, it's going to come on the ground. It could be, you know, three to eight takedowns, 10 plus minutes of control time in this one. He's also got submission potential as well of his own. But the one weakness I'd say that I saw from Matsumoto was that he can be taken down and held against the cage and held on the ground for long periods of time. And that's exactly what Argueta is going to look to do. So give me the underdog to just grind out two rounds. And I think he's got a better chance at scoring 100 points than he does sub 10x in a win. So he might be my favorite underdog on the card. I love it. I like it too. And he's going to get some decent ownership down there, but he's 100 more than Chris Curtis. Like, at, you know, Chris Curtis is going to be higher on with the five rounds, the narrative that he already beat him. I mean, even at, right, you agree. I know you agree, actually. Looking at her ownership, I'm not going to say it out loud. Even with the worst money line, yeah, I gotta say it. Even with the worst money line, um, I still expect Curtis to be higher owned. Yeah, and I like them both. I, I do. I will say that Brendan Allen line, minus 220 now, both made weight, but Allen taking a little money. Interesting. We'll keep it rolling, though. Again, appreciate everyone hanging out, watching live, watching on playback. Hope y'all had a good week. Ready for the weekend. Plenty of money to be made. If you want to join us at The Nation, again, weekly options, no promo code, no Discord. If you want to check out all the content, though, otherwise, monthly, six-month, annual, MMA going on, PGA going on, NBA going on, MLB going on, NASCAR going on. That's a lot of money out there in the DraftKings FanDuel lobby. Hoop 15 gets you 15% off at Chip and Nation. Get in the Discord for sure if you do join any of the monthly six-month or annual packages. Let's keep it rolling. Next fight on the card, Pierre Rodriguez, Cynthia Calvillo, 8,400 Rodriguez, 7,800 
Calvillo minus 130, Rodriguez plus 110. Cynthia plus 240, the most likely fight to go the distance on the card, plus 415 inside the distance for Calvillo, plus 440 for Rodriguez. I, I'll just say I'll be short and sweet. I'm going to run it back from last, last fight we just talked about. Fade the favorite. Give me the underdog. I prefer the 600 savings. I'll pick Calvillo as a pick. I just I don't see Rodriguez scoring in this fight. Like she over three takedowns per 15 minutes so far in her USC fights. Calvillo has good takedown defense. So what 2017 or 2018 was the last time she's been taken down. I think she can maybe even get a takedown. She impressed me in the Loopy fight. Outstruck Loopy over 100 significant strikes. Got a takedown. I just I, I think this line at worst should be a pick 'em or a coin flip. I'm getting six hundred dollars savings. I think more wrestling upside. Tell me if I'm wrong, because if you just look at the numbers, it'll be show Rodriguez side. But I'm mean, like the strength of competition night and day. Calvillo overweight fading Pierre Rodriguez. What about you? Yeah, again, I agree. I I, I don't know if I'm going to fade Rodriguez. I think since she's only 8,400, I do think she's in play for 10x plus. I, she should be the better striker in this one. More uh, TKO upside as well, and she could mix in a few takedowns. But yeah, Calvillo's got good takedown defense. I think that Calvillo would do a lot more in top control if she can get takedowns, and she's just more dangerous on the ground, in my opinion, as well. But yeah, she's going to have to get takedowns. If she's going to win the fight, and she's going to have to control a good amount of the fight. So yeah, at, at 7,800, if she gets a win here, she's going to score. You think she's drawn dead? Drawn dead striking? That loopy performance impressed me. Grant, no, not drawn dead, but I, yeah. I would, I would think I'd take Rodriguez in a boxing too. match over Loopy too. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, no, not drawn dead, and she could put up decent volume while she's on the feet too. So I just expect her to score over ten x if she does get a win here. And I think you're right with the pick 'em line. It does look like a pretty pick 'em fight to me, where she has the edge on the ground, Rodriguez has the edge on the feet. Uh, but yeah, give me the grappler in that situation. So Calvillo leverage play, but. I won't fade Rodriguez. I'll just say underweight. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm yeah, I'm trying to always have four fades. So far, we talked about three of mine. Cornell, uh, Rodriguez, and uh, Matsumoto. So we got three of the four. Hopefully, uh, I put in the slate plan too. I don't always draw it up this way, but a lot of early fades. That means my night could be over early. It'd be sad. Hey, we got two college basketball games. Got some money on UConn there. You can always bet later, but going to be scary early with all these fades for sure what's going on g kiefer hope you're doing well man always good to see you let's keep it going next fight on the card big marley this is the short notice replacement victor hugo was supposed to fight all Lee in steps pedro falco on what like on wednesday three days notice or something crazy short notice only minus 130 is silva though plus 110 is pedro my 8200 8k is the pricing I don't see anything on fight odds for inside the distance. I don't know if you like saw it on any specific book. I see under one and a half though at plus 155. So seeing under one and a half is nice to see. I mean, man, I'll, I'll throw it to you right away in this one. Falco looked good to me on the tape. I was able to watch Hugo dangerous on the ground. Like this is one of my favorite fights in the mid tier. Was this one in the Buck Almeida fight? I went Almeida fight my first favorite. This is my second favorite. Um, but I want, yeah, I was kind of torn on this. I want you to tell me <laughs> you were torn too. Yeah. This is my most torn fight on the card. Yeah. I just have no real lean on who's going to win. I, both guys are good grapplers, but I give the grappling edge to Hugo in this one. We, we definitely don't want a 15 minute striking match. That's for sure. If it's a 15 minute striking match, we could just X both sides out here, but Hugo does have power on the feet. He could land one, one punch knockout and but I don't know. I mean, I feel like I probably favor Falco in a 15-minute striking match just to win I think wild. So. Yeah, and then uh, Falco's got big-time power too. Like, But it was on the ground where he showed most of his power. I think it was Contender Series. He had a knockout. He was in full mount and got a – And he didn't get signed. Knockout. He didn't but even get then, signed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he had a fight after that. That's right. Somewhere else. Uh, but then there was one on the regional scene before that where, like, he is chest to chest on the ground with this dude, hitting him with these little four inch punches, and he knocks the guy out cold with that. So <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know what's going to happen here? Hugo's going to go for like a leg lock or ankle lock, and he's going to get knocked out in top control by this Falco guy. So that's what I picked Let's to go. happen. But I don't really have any real lean, like, handicapping wise, it's a, it's a pick em for me. 
Um, so just I'd side with the underdog there as well. But Hugo is a very dangerous grappler. Um, he will shoot for takedowns early and often as well. He, he'll attempt to chain wrestle. He's not a great wrestler, but he's really good once he gets the fight to the mat. Um, he, he will grab for legs as well. But yeah, man, I just don't know what the heck's going to happen in this fight. So I just went with uh, my prediction as the TKO from Falco. I just see him knocking him out on the ground as as he's trying to get some sort of leg submission. This one, I literally said pretty much the same thing as you have. I don't know what's, I don't have a lean on who's going to win this fight. I don't have a lean on how it's going to play out. It's kind of like the Chepe fight. I'm so torn on both of these, but I also kind of, we talked about earlier, I put in the slate plan. You don't need to take stands on every single fight. Like I'm going to be around the field on both of these guys because I don't want to fight. I don't feel confident in determining my night when I feel I'm making stands on other fights. Like both these guys have a hundred plus point upside. This fight could be a snoozer if it just stays on the feet. Like, I think the range of outcomes are all over the place. I'm also just not – if I have eight, 15% of one of these guys or 35% of one of these guys, but I love everything else, like, I'm rolling with it. It's kind of how I'm going with this fight. So I'm prioritizing getting my exposures right in some other fights. Whatever kind of lands in this fight is kind of what I'm going to go with. I'm going to keep it that way. I'll say Falco is my preferred play um, because, man, watching – I was really impressed. I think he's the better striker – think his cardio looks solid. Now he's taking on a couple of days notice, which is always a concern, but it's like, why would you sign on the dotted line? If you weren't ready, maybe he just really needs to come in the UFC. I don't know though, but I feel, I feel good about Falco. Not, I shouldn't say I feel good about him. I like him for plus plus one ten. He's definitely my preferred betting side. And I think he's an interesting live bet because Hugo can slow down. We'll know how this fight goes. I think early, if Hugo can get it to the mat um, or Falco can stuff him. Um, just stay on top, be the better striker, etc. Um, but yeah, Falco the pick, not a strong lean on this fight. Keep it going. Next fight on the card. The third of three women's fights. Yeah, third of three. Norma Dumont, Jermaine Durandamy, minus one forty minus one twenty-four. Norma Dumont, uh Durandamy plus one oh four, plus two fifteen for this fight to finish. Dumont plus four hundred. Durandamy plus four fifteen. I put this fight as underweight, but both girls are going to be low owned anyway. I'm not going to cross them off because the case for uh, Duran Demi, 7,600 at plus 104. Like this fight could go off as a coin flip. She's taking money all week. Minus 190 just a couple days ago. Minus like all week Dumont has gone down. Duran Demi has taken money. So a $7,600 win, I don't know, 80 points. Could that be enough? Maybe. Now, I don't like her upside, though. She's low volume. Dumont's going to be looking for takedowns, clinch control, et cetera. So I think she's a floor play, 76, 80. Is it enough? Maybe. So I'll keep her in the pool. Dumont, she's going to be very, very low owned. She likes to wrestle. Durandamy, how do you beat her? You control her on the mat. You take her down. In chalky lineups, I don't think 10% Dumont or something is the craziest play. However, there's so many other better fights I like on this card. I think the most likely outcome, the winner scores 75 in a bus, but they'll be very low, low owned. I can make a case for both Duran and me for the money line value. Dumont, very low owned. If she wins wrestling upside, maybe, but yeah, not, not a fight. I like what about you? Same. I'll probably be in like the 10 to 20% range on, on both sides yeah. of this one. Um, Dumont I, is going to be my pick just because I mean, G- GDR has been out for like four years. She just had a baby last year as well, which is never really a good thing coming back from that. Uh, and then Dumont's going to have a clear edge if she can get one takedown. She probably hangs out there for the rest of the round. Um, I mean, GDR did submit Juliana Pena with a guillotine, which is impressive. So if she can do that to Pena, she could do that to Dumont. But I would think most likely if this fight's on the ground, it's Dumont grinding her out for her, however long it is once she gets that takedown. But GDR is going to have a huge striking edge in this one. A striking decision from GDR is not going to cut it. She's not a high-volume striker, so I think I max her ownership at her inside the distance line, which right now is plus 400. So 20%, that's probably my max, but I'd prefer less than that. But I do think she's alive to knock out Dumont. Dumont was knocked out by Megan Anderson in her debut. GDR is way scarier than, than Anderson. She's way better than Anderson. So I think that GDR is very not very in play, but I think she – is she's live. In, she's live for a knockout, yeah. But 
if she doesn't get a knockout, she's probably spending time on her back, not scoring. And then if she can win, you know, six to eight minutes on the feet, she probably scores like 60 points or, or worse. So yeah, I'd prefer like 10% or so GDR. And then Dumont's my preferred side because if she can just grab a takedown early in each round, she she can do 13 plus minutes of top control here with three takedowns and score 90, 100 plus points at low ownership. So she's going to be my preferred leverage play if there was one. But still, I probably want like 20% max of her because I think her most likely ceiling is like 90 points. 90 points probably, I don't know, it might get it done. I don't know. I just think she's similar to like a Melissa Dixon where I guess I'd rather save the money and get Dumont if I'm just comparing the two. But she also has a much tougher matchup at the same time. So I don't know. It's it's another tough one. 10 to 20% range, though. That seems about right. Yeah, we see it the same. I'll max both their ownerships. I'll cap it, but I'll keep them in the pool, um, use them in chalkier lineups. Now, I will say Dumont's coming down from 145. She was forced to. There really is no 145 division. She made weight, though. Weighed in at 136. So I was keeping a close eye on that. Good to see. And, yeah, every fighter so far that stepped on the scale has made weight. Still waiting for probably roughly 10 or something, though. Fingers crossed we keep all all 13. Let's get to the next fight on the card. 13 to talk about. Alex Morono, Court McGee, minus 290 Morono, plus 245 Court McGee, minus 105 for this fight to finish. All the finish equity, plus 100 for Morono inside the distance, plus 1,400 for Court McGee on bet online. I don't know if that's right, but, man, um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll throw it to you right away in this one. What do you, what do you see in this, Big Marley? Two old vets, 39-year-old Court, 33-year-old Morono. Yeah, I mentioned last week for I the know, Buckley fight that I, I cannot get Morono fights right. So I'm picking them here. I mean, 9,200, but – he has to get a finish. Like, and I don't think he's a likely wrestler in this one. I actually think McGee probably would be more likely to land multiple takedowns in this fight, but I think he's more likely to get a submission. Even if McGee is going for the takedown, I think that the guillotine is very live. Um, and if Morono does go for takedowns, I think he could submit McGee on the ground. McGee never has been submitted though. So I don't know how likely that is. It's just that he's got a nasty guillotine really, but McGee coming off of two knockout losses, both in the first round. I think Morono's in play for the knockout as well. He is like plus, basically pick him to get a finish in this one. So, man, do you I don't think know. Do round if, one, or do you think round two would be fine? That was my question for you. He lands five significant strikes. I assume no takedowns because I agree with you. I think Court's getting the takedowns if so. You think that's he enough? Could, the second he round. could land volume, so yeah. I could see round two being a okay. knockdown. But yeah, if he doesn't get a finish, though, he's not he's not even scoring ten x. I don't think he really has much of a chance at all at ten x. I think he had he beat Reese McKee or something and scored a ton of points in a decision. But the, McGee's not Reese McKee. Um, and then on the other side, like McGee, maybe he could grind out this fight. He's somewhat live for a win. I think that the the line's a little bit wide. But I, he's like a corn a cornhole to me. I just prefer other underdogs more. I think me that too. he doesn't really have much of a ceiling. If he wins, it's probably seventy to eighty points max almost for him. But yeah, give me Morono, and then I almost hope that I'm, I have my streak of being wrong on this guy continues because I think I'm going to be underweight just to this fight as a whole. Uh, but especially Morono, I just would rather pay up for other people even melissa dixon in my opinion and hope that morono doesn't get a finish or that it's late enough where he doesn't score well yeah i'm just never impressed enough with this guy to think that he's going to blow me away on DraftKings. so i'll probably be at least half the field maybe less on morono if not you know x an amount of a 20 or less pool yeah i get yeah i like all the uh, multiple others in the 9k range more i'm still gonna have some because i mean court's been knocked out in the first round his last two fights Jeremiah Wells and, um, I mean, Matt, that Matt Brown fight. Matt Brown's knocking you out in the first. I'm getting a little scared about your yeah. chin. 39, Morono throws volume. So, I in the in first round prop, plus 335, yeah. Morono went to plus, plus 300 now. Okay. So, it took a little money. And when I'm playing Morono, I agree. I like a lot of the other Bob Mundes, Allens of the world. I even like Mullins more, et cetera. But if – Court McGee's chin is just that bad. First round knockout, I think, is in place, so I'll play some for that. And like you said, I think if someone wrestles that is court, maybe he's just not liking it on the feet. 
And that ghillie is absolutely nasty. Like it could be locked in right away. Now you want that at the end of the first round because you're not going to, he gets it in a minute, a minute and five seconds. You ain't, you ain't getting, you're getting 93 and you're going to be really mad. Um, but I don't like court for the same, just like Cornell. I just prefer the other dogs down there, like Giago. So at least I get more Yago. So at least I get more leverage off of Bob Mundes than I do like a Morono type or something like that. Arguetta's down there. Curtis, we talked about Calvi. Like, yeah, I just, I'm not getting a court. While I do think the line is wide though. You said that too, right? Yeah. Like this, this line feels a little wide still. We're saying court's already gone is what this line's saying after that loss, which if he doesn't get knocked out, he could put up a little fight. Yeah, and like a, a guy like Morono is just not a guy with a lot of knockout power. So it's it's really fading court's chin at that point yeah. when you're giving Morono the odds that he has for it. But it also wouldn't shock me to see this. I mean, never been submitted before in like 40 fights or some shit. That, I mean, it's pretty damn impressive. That's impressive. But, if he is shooting for takedowns, that guillotine is going to be in play every single time. So, yeah, I can see it either way from Morono. I don't know what the, I never know what the hell to do with Morono on DraftKings. We'll see. I'll probably let the solver figure it out for me. I'll be underweight this fight in general as well, though. Yeah. Definitely, Matt, underweight. I agree. Yeah, I appreciate those words, Matt. Hope you're doing well. That is very nice of you. Let's keep it going. Absolute banger fight. I actually I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say I won't be underweight because it's going to have a lot of ownership. But a fight you don't want to ignore, Charlie Campbell, Trevor Peak, minus 163 Campbell, plus 143. Trevor Peak, minus 400 for this fight to finish, the most likely on the card. Campbell, minus 125. Trevor Peak, plus 215. Campbell open, minus 200. And this line's gone over the place. Minus 200, he opened. Got down to like minus 230, not even last week. And Trevor Peak's got some money ever since then. Even like... This morning, minus 175, not, or, or earlier today, minus 170, minus 663. April 2nd, minus 210. Like, Trevor Peak's taking some money throughout the week. And it makes sense to me because it's, it looks like a high variance striking match for as long as it lasts. Like, these guys are going to be throwing bombs. Campbell more technical. Peak way more wild. But Peak's got all the durability. I mean, Charlie Camp, yeah. Charlie Campbell, that contender series fight was absolutely nasty. Um, I mean, just a war back and forth. Like he can be cracked, Pete can crack. These guys stand on the on the feet and bang. I think Campbell's a rightful favorite, the better all around mixed martial artist. But I mean, Peak's always live as a dog. Just a jam fight, though. So Peak fights are always great. It's going to be very high owned anyway. But I'll be playing plenty of both. No, no, no hot take over here. I think ownership is kind of efficient on this fight. Yeah, it's my favorite fight on the card. You know, just watching wise and DraftKings wise, because it should be a barn burner. Uh, fight ends in round one, basically pick them like plus 110 right now. That's pretty solid, and it can go both ways. But I do think Campbell's just better and, and more likely to get the early knockout. But he, I mean, he needs, he almost needs it. He, it should be a crazy paced fight. So even the second round could be okay, especially if he's trying to mix in takedowns. But I think that Peaks are more likely wrestler in this one. He could get a, a crazy volume first pace knockout as well. So like Peak's more likely to completely break the card with 110 points at 7,200, but he's also going to get a lot of ownership. So I'm probably just going to be close to the field on Peak, maybe get a little bit of leverage there, but my preferred play is going to be Campbell. I will get leverage on him. I'm thinking uh, I'll probably get him in about half of my lineups. He's minus 125 right now to win inside the distance. And I think any inside the distance win from him is going to really compete for the optimal lineup. It's just 9K, like we're paying for it. So it's tough, but I, I like when we're sorting by salary, I still like him more than Dick Mullins, I guess. I still like him more than Morono. And then you got the three, we got Walker, Bahamondes, and Allen right around him. Those are going to be the chalky ones along with Campbell. So I, I think everyone's mixing all four of them in. I could see him outscoring all of them. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe 50 to, to 65% of Campbell in my lineups just because it's my favorite fight to target. I want to be close to all in. Maybe I go 60 on him, 30 on peak, something like that. But how do – like it's got to be a Campbell decision win or like a late Campbell finish that makes this fight not on the optimal, right? You said Peak can wrestle. Maybe Peak wrestles in round one. Campbell knocks him out in round two. Campbell puts up 105. Yeah. Allen puts up 112. 
Mullen, Bob Munez puts up 115. Like, there's way more pass. You need a Campbell win. It almost feels like, like it's hard to see a peak win not being optimal for yeah. sure at, at that price. Yeah, so peak's like my, the most solid. Like, if this underdog wins, he's on the optimal line. Argueta feels he's good too. Our Argueta feels good too. Curtis feels yeah. solid too. You I don't know. I would take they both win. I would say if they both win with their best performance, Peak's going to outscore them. Yeah. Pro the wrestling. But, yeah, I, I, probably. I don't know. but I'm picking Peak to lose, and I'm picking Argueta to win. So I'll probably yeah. have more. I will have more Argueta. Yeah. No, it's definitely an interesting fight. Like Again, if I have 60% Peak and 30 Campbell, or you flip-flop it, and I 60 Campbell, 30 Peak, and I like everything else, I really don't care. I don't have a strong lean on this fight. I want plenty. I'm not making a rule to jam this fight or like to make a rule exactly one, just cause it's going to be 85% owned combined or 80% owned. Anyway, it's going to be way up there. Um, I don't think there's enough leverage to go, but if I was only playing three to five lineups, I would have one a peak or Campbell probably in every lineup, oh, yeah. mainly just 20 and above is when I'm not going to make that hard rule. Only played a couple. I'm definitely though getting this fight. Oh yeah, Nate, what's going on? Definitely excited for next week. UFC 300, Masters week, so much money to be made next week. DK did tweak, though, I will say a little bit. $30 for the main GPP, hurtful. Did not need to go all the way up to $30, but awesome card indeed. Very excited. Try and make some money today, this week, though, for a bigger bankroll next week. That was the main card opener. Absolute banger there. Going to an interesting fight here. Walter Walker, Johnny Walker's brother, making his UFC debut. Taking on Lucas Bresky. Plus two or minus 225 Walker, plus 190 Bresky, minus 200 for the fight to finish, minus 130 inside the distance for Walker, plus 475 for Bresky. Opened minus 400 Walker. Now it's minus 225. Bresky, been a lot of people's dog throughout. I mean, inside the distance prop too. Open minus 325, minus 200 now. People like some Bresky, people like some overs. Walker, the highest owned price or the highest fight, highest price fighter on the card because of the line movements at 9,400. Still going to get some ownership, um, but I think Brendan Allen will be higher owned. You mentioned Campbell, Bob Moondays will be pretty similar ownership. I'll say I'm on Bresky for DFS. I'm not necessarily saying I'm picking him to win, but like a 38% owned Walker or something around there, a 12% owned Bresky. In a sloppy heavyweight fights, like I just don't, I'm not sure Walker's any good at the end of the day. Bresky's awful, we do at least know that. But I mean, minus 225 with everyone knowing how bad this Bresky dude is, as one of the lowest owned fighters of the card, with some leverage off a of Walker. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing some Bresky. It's gross, but I'm playing some. That's why I'm not playing Cornell, I'm not playing Court McGee's. Bresky will get that ownership. I'll play some Walker too, but like I prefer Bajo Mundes. I prefer Campbell. I prefer Allen. I prefer Alexander Hernandez. Maybe even Mullins if she's going to be like 10% lower owned. So, yeah, I, I'll be more overweight to Bresky, and it's it's gross. You already mentioned Walker's name like five times this show, so I know you're going to be on the opposite side, though. I, I mean, I am going to be on the opposite, the opposite side, but I don't really disagree with anything you said. He might suck. Like his level of competition was not was not impressive at all. And I, yeah, I didn't even know he was Johnny Walker's brother. I just heard that like today or yesterday. I was like, what? I was like, yeah. I did not see that resemblance at all. They do not look like each other at all. No, <laughs> they don't fight like each other either. No. Uh, yeah, I would, I would not have faked that one, but he does have one of the higher ceilings on the card, in my opinion, because he, he's a big dude. He's got power. He's got first round knockout power where he could score a hundred plus points that way. Uh, Bresky was knocked out in the first round in his last fight. And then he also has wrestling too, and he could wrestle in all three rounds here. And Bretzky was taken down eight times in his fight before the one where he was knocked out in the first round. So I just think that a Walker win has a decent chance of scoring well, but it, it has to be wrestling based or it has to be a knockout because I would think that if it's a 15 minute striking match, he's going to lose on volume to, to Bretzky. I also think that Bretzky could knock him out. These guys are big boys. We haven't seen Walker really tested yet. So I think Bretzky's in play to break the slate. So I'm fine getting overweight to Bresky as the underdog. Um, I just, I mean, the line is tightened up so much at this point, though, that I think now the value is on Walker. He, when 
salaries came out, he was the most expensive. I mean, he was the biggest favorite on the card. And I, I didn't really, I didn't even disagree with it that much. I was, I wasn't like, I got to go bet Bretzky right now. Um, but now at minus two thirty, it's like, if I'm betting this fight, I'm actually taking Walker because I do think that he is the more dangerous fighter early in this fight. He also went into the fourth round in his last fight and we've seen Bresky slow down. So I don't even know that Bresky has the cardio edge in this one. And if Bresky does win, I think his only ceiling is the knockout. If he wins a, a decision here, I don't know how many takedowns are coming along with it. If he wins on volume, he's still probably flirting with around 10 X. So I just think the more likely ceilings on Walker in this one, he'll be my preferred play. I will get leverage. And I'm, I mean, I'm glad with the line movement because it's going to take his ownership down and I would have been cool having his, his ownership where he was priced like three, four days ago. Yeah, that makes sense. I, to be honest, I'm just more on the Bresky, just hoping Walker's just this cheeks. Yeah. Like I'm hoping like in a win, Walker's just awful. Bresky just lands on top. Like Walker completely gasses. Bresky somehow lands a big shot. You know what I mean? Like he definitely can win a decision. Like, let's see what Bresky by decision. Uh, plus 600, inside the distance, plus 475. So they agree. I agree, too. I think Bresky is more likely for a finish than a decision. Decision, I wouldn't love it, but he's, what, 6,800? You would take any 6,800 win, even if it's not optimal. Does Walker get knocked out hilariously like his brother? Hey, Jamal Hill would knock it, knock his brother out just like that as well. Shut off the light. Sweet dreams coming next week. Um, no, he's never been. he's never been knocked out, though. Uh, four fights left on the card, Big Marley. Four fights left. Ignacio Bahamundes, Christos Giagos, minus 320 Bahamundes, plus 270 Giagos, minus 210 for this fight to finish, minus 150 for Bahamundes, plus 550 for Giagos, 9,100, 7,100. Bahamundes is going to be one of the more popular fighters on the card, uh, one of the high, biggest favorites, one of the best inside the distance props, only 9,100. Like, he's a dollar bigger favorite than Walker we just talked about for 300 less. You dive into the fight even more, Giagos is a very fast starter. He slows down as the fight goes. Bob Munez has a bunch of upside. Now, I'm playing Giagos, I guess, similar to Bresky. Like, I'm not playing Cornell and, and – uh, I'm not playing Cornell and uh, Court McGee because Morono and Mullins will be lower owned than will Bob Munez and then Walker will be, I think. So I'd rather play the dog, even though I'm not picking them. Lower own dog with more leverage off of the chalkier fighter. And Giagos, man, he can get takedowns. I think he does get probably a takedown early in this fight. I don't think he knocks out Bob Munez. You really do never know, though. Giagos has some pop. But Giagos can put up points in a hurry wrestling. My, plus 270, we've seen bigger dogs lose. If Giago or bigger dogs win. I think I said that right. You know what I'm saying. If Giagos wins... I think he has a very good chance at the optimal because of his style. I'm picking Bob Munde's second round KO. Giagos, some success around one, slows down in round at the end of round one, KO in round two. However, when he wins, he scores well. You get a lot of leverage. He's low owned, et cetera. Great fight to target Bob Munde's for me. Yeah, it's another one where I really not sure what I want to do with it because I do think that Bahama Mondes is gonna win. But I have him winning a decision, which is probably not going to cut it at $9,100. Like, he can strike at a high pace, but at $9,100, I don't think he's striking at that high of a pace unless he's landing at least a knockdown along the way because he's not going to be shooting for takedowns in this one. Giagos is going to be our more likely wrestler, our more dangerous submission artist, especially early at least. And then I think he's probably got more one-shot power in the first round, too, so, yeah, if Giagos wins this fight, I think he's got a really good chance of breaking the slate, scoring 100 points. And if he wins, he's going to score more than 10x. So I'm definitely cool getting some leverage on Giagos for those reasons. But, yeah, it's kind of all front-loaded where his success needs to come in the, in the first round because he'll slow down and then Bahamondas will pick it up and then it, it's just not going to be close on the feet after that. I think Bahamondas could get a late second round, even a third round TKO, but just not be enough at 9,100. But he's like minus 150 to win inside the distance. It could come in the first round. He could score 110 plus points here. So I don't know. I think that the higher his ownership gets, the less I like him. And I prefer Walker 
over him, especially if he's going to be lower owned than Bahamondes because Bahamondes is a bigger favorite. He's got a better IT. Uh, My guess is he probably will. I think they'll yeah, be relatively so. close, but I think he probably – I think Bahamondes is probably the second – Top top four highest on with Allen there with Curtis there and I think it probably is him. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I get surprised all the time though. You're sharper with ownership than me. So so I would prefer to pay a hundred dollars less for Campbell, and then at that lower ownership, I would rather take Walker because if you're telling me Walker's going to win, Bahamondes is going to win. I think Walker outscores him yeah, uh, more often right. than not. So I'm probably going to be underweight to Bahamondes. And then maybe you talked me into being overweight on Giagos. I would have thought I'd be right around the field on him. But, I, yeah, I could see him breaking the slate with something early. It's just that I'm not picking him to win. So I like <laughs> other underdogs more. So I don't know what I'm going to do with with him. But I would say um, 10 to 25% I'd be fine with. Yeah, I initially had Giagos as the fade, as a, a fade. But, yeah, the more I thought about it, I was like, that's what I'm trying to – just because I feel confident Bob Mondes, like very long. You look at these two at face-offs, like Bob Mondes is massive for the division. Take that defensive solid because he's really tall. He's hard to take down. Get-up game's fine. Giago's very front-loaded, like you said. But when Giago's wins, it just feels like the upside, the ceiling's there, and you get leverage. So that's what talked me into it. But I prefer so many other dogs more because I think they're way more live for a win if I'm picking against them. But kind of like we talked about a lot the past two weeks, circle back, picking fights I like to target and pass more so than I think he loses. So I'm not playing him exactly what this Giago situation is. I'll have more than I want because I think he loses. But when he doesn't lose, I expect 100 plus or at least an optimal, at least on the optimal. I'd be surprised if he, very surprised if Giago's won and he was not on the optimal. Yeah, never, scored, never scored less than 92. In a UFC win. And and yeah, I, would, take I would say that probably holds here as well if he wins. I agree. I agree. Good stat right there. Three fights left, Big Marley. I mentioned this fight earlier uh, that I was concerned with. Morgan Charrier taking on – not worried about it. I didn't have a good lead, read on this fight, so I'm going to throw it to you. Morgan Charrier, probably butchered that name. Ho, uh, Chepe Mariscal, Jose Mariscal, Chepe, same people. Morgan, minus 119. Chepe minus 101 plus 140 for this fight to finish. Uh, most of the finishing equity on the Morgan side plus 185 plus one or plus 585 for Chepe. We got this fight price 8300 7900. A lot of line movement in this fight too. So Morgan opened minus 145, got down to like minus 175. Then the past couple of days, Chepe's had a good amount of steam on the way back. And I actually surprised this one fight wasn't a pick um, before I throw it to you, just because of Chepe's name. Like everyone loves and remembers the fight where he beat Trevor Peak. The Jack Jenkins was an arm injury, but people will game log watch maybe and see 108 points. Morgan had a big one himself, first round KO against not a very good fighter, but yeah, Chepe's been impressive. What's your lean on this fight? How do you like it for DFS? Cause I, this is similar to the other fight I mentioned, no lean on how it goes. No lean on the winner. I just want to be around the field so it doesn't ruin my night in every way. Maybe you can talk me into something. Nah, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I think that they're just both in play. We're on the Chepe side. Really, any win as an underdog from him could score well. I think he's more likely to control the fight on the ground, more likely to land multiple takedowns throughout the fight. He's a, he's a wild, aggressive striker at times too, so he could get a knockout. But I don't know. The line just doesn't really make sense. Like minus 119 for Morgan, minus 101 for uh, Chepe. But then let's compare inside the distance. We got plus 185 close. for Morgan, plus 585 for Chepe. And then they have the same exact decision line. So I, I just, I kind of, uh, I'm on the, the Morgan side. I just think I'm more impressed with him. I think he's the better, more dangerous striker in this one. He's got nasty leg kicks. He'll mix in nasty body shots as well. Uh, I do think he's a lot more likely to finish the fight. And the more that the line is shifting, we might have Chepe be the favorite by the time that the fights kick off. And if that's the case, his ownership is going to just shoot up. And I'll like him less in that case. And I'll like Morgan more. Uh, but right now, it's, it's one where I don't see me really making it a point to target this one with my hand builds. And I'd be fine with anywhere from like 15 to 40% on these guys if I'm MMEing. 
because uh, I, I just don't know how this one's going to play out. But my ultimate prediction was Morgan by TKO. And I'm going to see Morgan Wallen tonight, so I just feel like at this point I got to roll with Morgan, right? So I got to go yeah. overweight to Morgan. Underweight now with the new Chepe possible ownership, probably underweight there. Matt has no idea either. That makes three of us, Matt. Yeah, I could be 10 to 40%. Like if I 10% Chepe or 40% Chepe and I loved everything else, I probably roll with it, to be honest. I don't have a strong lean either in, in, in anything. So you said Morgan. I'm not going to convince anyone else elsewhere. Marley likes Morgan. Maybe I'll vote Morgan a little bit. But again, if I have more Chepe and I love everything, I'm totally fine. If I have 10% of both of them and I'm way underweight, well, I guess I'm fine like that too. I just hope others outscore them. I'm not going to – my night's not going to necessarily be determined. I'm not going to be mixing and getting a certain amount of ownership on either of these guys and messing around with it to determine my night. I'll make sure other fights I get. I'll mix in these guys. But, yeah, I'm, we didn't really help people out too much in that one. I'm not going to say any more, though, because – I'm not helping what people out with any other words. Yeah. If, if you want some more help, hit me up in Discord on Saturday. I'll tell you my exact ownership on both of them. Yeah, there you go. You can do that as always. Two fights left, baby. Alexander Hernandez, Damon Jackson, minus 202. Hernandez, plus 172. As Jackson, minus 210 for this fight to finish. Hernandez, minus 115 inside the distance. Damon Jackson, plus 350. Yeah, you can start with this one. How do you see it going? Another where, tough one. Where do you I, want me to start? You want me to try and help you? <laughs> oh, I do like both sides. I feel I just think it's tough to predict a winner in this one because I, I definitely favor Hernandez in the striking department, um, especially the TKO equity. He's he's going to be more durable, especially early, and he's got a lot more power as well. He's got wrestling chops too, but I think Jackson's the much more likely wrestler in this one. I think he's more dangerous on the ground as well. Um, and if Hernandez isn't getting a TKO and he's not wrestling and he wins, I just don't think he's going to score very well. Whereas any win from Jackson, I think is putting up more than 10 X. And I think that he's more live than Vegas does. I think that the line should be a little bit closer in this one. Um, early I would favor Hernandez late. I would favor Jackson, but Jackson could get off to takedowns early and win all three rounds or just get a submission in the, in the first round and score 105 plus points here. So, I'm definitely – my preferred play on this one is Jackson. I know that. But I don't know how much Hernandez I want to get. I'm, I'm definitely fine mixing him in. But he's – I don't know. I just need – I need the knockout. What's his, his – He's minus 115 inside the distance. His knockout's plus 130. Damn. I got him by first round knockout. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's hard to fade that. So – At, at 8,700. But if you don't like it, you know ownership will go there because – you look at inside the distance and you look at money line and the price. Like he checks all the boxes, yeah. all the boxes. Damon Jackson's been knocked out. What? Four times. Five. Yeah. Four times. He's already been knocked out. Uh, six losses. Hernandez can hit. He can wrestle. I feel like he's going to get ownership. I, for me, how I look at it is Jackson. It feels kind of not necessarily suburb bust, but I think like a lot of Jackson's path is just a sub. Like if Hernandez, either goes for a takedown himself or Jackson does get a takedown himself. I mean, what, 15 wins by saw? Like, he is nasty on the mat. I just think – on the feet, I think power, speed, athleticism, all is Hernandez. I think he can say – like, I kind of look at this as a Jim Miller fight for Hernandez. And I think Jim Miller, at that point, I mean, might be better than Damon Jackson. Like, I was very impressed. He kept it on the feet until, the, like, the last minute when he got his back taken, which was scary. But he just kept it on the feet. He pieced him up, and he beat a very good Jim Miller. I think pretty similar here. However, if he does that same style and plays it smart and just keeps it at range, you don't want a decision for Alexander Hernandez. So I'll throw it back to you. I'm, I like this fight a lot. I'm playing both. My preferred play is the Hernandez side. I do know that. But Jackson has plenty of upside, another live dog with a lot of it. Finish, yeah, your thoughts on this one. Yeah, I think you just talked me. You talked me into. I mean, I will be overweight to Jackson. I'm picking him to win, but I was probably going to be a little underweight to Hernandez. And now, since I'm going to have a lot of Jackson, I think it just makes sense. Like, if he's going to lose this fight, it probably is likely to be a knockout, and it could be in the first round where Hernandez breaks the slate. So yeah, maybe I'll just get leverage to both sides of this one. I, I don't hate that at all, especially eighty seven hundred dollars. 
I like him. Plug and Walker. Plug and Walker. Take it. I know you like Walker a lot, but can Hernandez not outscore Walker? Like both are favored to finish. Like the odds are pretty much the same on the money line. So that's another pit, not a pivot, but 800 you can leave and feel, or 700, I guess that'd be, and feel confident in doing that. So I think 800 is like the people always ask, how much can you leave? We mentioned it in the 85, 7,700 fight. I think a thousand you can leave comfortably on this card, I guess. Oh yeah. I mean, I think every underdog's live on this card. I'd be fine. I'll probably set my uh, minimum at least 2k, 2K. maybe more, maybe like 2,500. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I'd say you changed my mind on this one. I'm going to be, a, I don't know. Sure. I mean, I guess it depends on what uh, Hernandez ownership comes in at. You might've talked me into raising it as yeah. well. <laughs> um, so my current ownership, I can see me being overweight on if I, if I up them to like High thirties, maybe I go underway. I don't know. Hit me up in Discord again on this one. Another tough yeah. one. So many of these ones on this car where it's just <laughs> they can play sure. out so many different ways. Uh, so I don't know what's going to happen. I guess on this one, but give me the underdog to pull off the upset. Yeah, I mean it, it's just a great. I'm not sure I wasn't mute. It's just a. It's very interesting fight for sure. It's a good one to target because Jackson has a submission, his path with the submission. Both guys could wrestle. Hernandez great finishing props. Striking advantage. The price is good for the props. It's going to get ownership. I think Hernandez will probably be in the mid thirties, and yeah, I mean, I'll probably be somewhere around there too. But I definitely have interest in Jackson, even though I'm picking against him. What's up, Smarty? Hope you're doing well today. Smarty always in the Discord. College football. We do have DGen, of course. Now, Smarty, great job last year. We didn't even charge anything. He did it for free in the Discord. It was not an additional part of the membership. Absolutely crushed. So many members. Had a lot of success. I see him in the college basketball streets as well. So smart, a huge piece of the content over here in the Discord. Awesome dude. And again, that's just another benefit. When you join the nation, you get in the Discord. Tennis. We don't have tennis offering. We have a tennis Discord. Jackson there. Other people help out. Other sports give their takes. A lot of very sharp members in there. UFL now too. I didn't even know that. UFL now as well. DraftKings has prizes. Smarty helping out all the time. Awesome stuff there, Smarty. Again, it's low. $69 a month. Use the promo code HOOP15. Get you 15% off. Six-month package cheaper. Annual package. The cheapest, if you do that, HOOP15 is the promo code for all of them. Last fight on the card, Big Marley. Main event. Rematch. Brendan Allen, Chris Curtis. Minus 220. Brendan Allen, a plus 185. Chris Curtis. Minus 210 for this fight to finish. Allen plus 100, Curtis plus 295 inside the distance. Take it away, Big Marley. Yeah, just, I mean, with five rounds to work with, it'll be one of the mm. better fights on the card to target both sides of, but it's, a, it's another one where it's just tough to tell you how it's going to play out. Uh, Curtis already knocked him out when they fought before. The first round was a pretty close striking match. I think Curtis had him on the numbers, but I, I could have seen the judges going either, either way on that one. Um, but Allen, I mean, Allen's looking like a, a potential title contender. He's got eight of his last nine fights or wins. His only loss was to Curtis. He's submitted two of the best submission guys in the division. I think if, if he's worried about getting knocked out again here, he should try to look to wrestle a little bit more. I, I definitely don't think he looked to wrestle enough in that first fight. Um, and if he does look to do that, I think he can, win the fight, you know, as much as he wants on the ground. I think he can control the fight on the ground. I think he's live for the submission as well. It's just getting it down to the ground is going to be the hardest part against a guy with good takedown defense and Curtis. And if he can't get it to the ground, then Curtis is live to win a five-round striking match. He can knock him out again in any round. So I don't know. I'm just going to be – I'm going to be pretty heavy on both sides, but I do side with Allen as the winner by submission. So I'll probably get – him as my leverage play, maybe I'll be something like 50-60% Allen and then 30-40% Curtis, something along those lines. I, I don't know, but if you if you talk me into it, I mean, if you are about to break down a Curtis win, you could change my mind on this one because I'm just not confident enough that Allen is going to wrestle like I would want him to do. Yeah. How about this before I break it down? So my thought is – 85% we have at our ownership right now is going to be on this fight. It's a 13-fight card. 
I think the sharp side is the underweight total on this fight. I think that's too much ownership. There's enough other live fights that can get to like Trevor Peak and Charlie Campbell right in that same range. Hernandez Jackson right in that same range. Bahamunde's fight right in that same range. Argueta as a dog like that can outscore Curtis. What are your thoughts on that being underweight on this fight? So I'll say, I guess I'll say mine quick. I'm underweight Allen. I prefer Curtis as my preferred play because I think there's past Allen can put up 105 and still just be outscored by others and not get there. A little harder to see with Curtis. He can be lulled to sleep, take moments off a little bit though, like the Phil Hawes, get his reads and then explode. So even a third, fourth round Curtis knockout maybe can score 80 and maybe that gets outscored. Allen, I think there's pass. And I I just don't think Brendan Allen, like he went over three on takedowns in the first round. He tried when he was getting pieced up. Curtis was just too strong. He shrugged him off of him. Curtis, elite takedown defense. It just feels like a tough stylistic matchup for Allen. Like how someone can lay minus 220 after watching that first fight is crazy to me. I don't really get it. But back to all this, I'm going to have some of both. Curtis is my preferred play since I think when he wins, he's more likely to be optimal, whereas Allen still needs to put up a big one and outscore others in his range. But I'm gonna have I'm gonna be underweight to this fight. Like I'm not gonna I'm gonna make sure I have less than 85%, less than 80%, and just hope because when you win, when you fade the main event, the world's yours on a 13 fight card. It's so easy to get different. When you win, how much do you win? So what are your thoughts on, on the fade like that quick? And then any final thoughts? That was my fa- thoughts uh, on this one. Yeah, I definitely think that makes sense, and definitely more so in an Allen win. I kind of think Allen's live to win a five-round striking match, too, to be honest with you. I agree. Um, And if he does do that, then he's probably not going to be on the optimal lineup. Uh, And also, maybe it's a a second or third-round finish, and he just doesn't do a lot leading up to it, take him off. So, yeah, I I think I'd be okay with that. It's just, I mean, when I'm making – if I'm making 100 lineups, I still probably am going to have this fight in – in close to three fourths of them, I would think, but that's still that's still underweight. Three fourths would be underweight. That's true. I mean, but maybe shit. Maybe you talked me into a little bit less on that. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and since I'm picking Allen to win, I think I picked him like second or third round submission too, and that might not cut it. So, yeah, I, I could be okay with that. But he is still yeah. one of my favorite favorites. Like sorting by salary again. I like Walker. Campbell Allen, they're my top three favorites. Yeah, I, I mean, it, he's a great play. Like, yeah, in the rankings, I have him number one. Everyone knows he's a great play. That's the thing, though. Everybody knows he's a great play. So 85% of the field playing it, like, I just think – I think that's a little over-owned on this 13 fight card, really. Is this the first time title on a stream without a hat? Not quite. A little more as of late. Not quite. But, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is a little bit rare. Marley got the hat on for me. That's all 13 fights. Awesome stuff is always Big Marley. Again, you want to join us? Hoop 15, 15% off MMA, PGA, NASCAR, MLB, NBA. I think I might already said NBA. NASCAR, already said that, I know. UFL, tennis, eSports. And again, those not paid for the subscription. Members in there helping people out. Smarty does a phenomenal job, always in there. Very sharp guy. Wins plenty of cheese himself. Get in the Discord monthly, six-month annual packages. Use the promo code HOOP15. If you just want to check us out, we have weekly packages. No Discord, no promo code. You can see what we offer, though. A lot of sports going on. Probably a good time to check it out if you haven't already. All the stuff. Actually, I just put all the MMA, all my MMA stuff up. Fight rankings will be up soon. And not sure people saw it last week. The Stone had it for golf, of course, with DGen. Now is in MMA. Just a very easy, if you only got five, 10 minutes, one-stop shop. You see overweight, underweight tags, height, reach, what they weigh in at. Just a one-stop shop. All the stuff you need to do it quickly. You want our breakdowns to read, slate plan, fight rankings, et cetera. Final words for the people, Big Marley. I've talked enough. No, nah, no better time to sign up. We got Masters next week. Millie up top there. A couple Millie up top, right? Yep. Uh, and then UFC 300, we know everybody watching this is definitely going to be watching UFC 300. You're going to want some action over there on DraftKings as well. So sign up now. Like Smarty said in the comments, you won't look back. So can't wait for this card to build, to be a bankroll builder for next week. But yeah, it's, it's ultimately next week that I'm looking forward to. But good luck on this card to you, Title. Good luck to everybody listening. Let's ship it.
Let shit be! As Tambo like to say, good luck, Big Marley. Big Marley, I'm Title Town. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Let shit be!